Hey y'all, I'm Briscoe Diggs and welcome to another episode of Real Talk. What were you doing at seven years old? My next guest was starring in a movie with Burt Reynolds. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend, Mr. Norman Golden II, AKA Enormous. What's up, Norman? What's going on, y'all? What's going on, Briscoe? How you been? How you doing? I'm doing well. Welcome to Real Talk. I appreciate you doing this today on a Saturday. Oh, for sure, man. My <laughs> pleasure. Yeah. Well, let me get right into it. Let me ask you, how have you been doing through this pandemic? Uh, yeah, I've been. I mean, I've been. I've been doing pretty good. Um, I've been very fortunate to, you know, be surrounded by, you know, folks that care about me, folks that I care about. Um, I've actually taken the time to become a lot more creative and innovative with, you know, a lot of the things that I've been trying to do, um, and I've actually had quite a few successes during the pandemic you know i mean of course you know I've, I've had some some challenges as well but you know for the most part i, I i'm i've been i've been wonderful i'm i'm, I'm kind of like you know when everybody's like oh my god i'm like okay that's an opportunity for me to be like victory you know what i'm saying so right. um i've been been well i mean i've released um a project a short film during this pandemic. I've gotten engaged. Um, I've gotten a new place, you know. So I like I'm I'm like pandemic what? <laughs> right. Hey. Yeah, it's interesting yeah. how some of us took control of our lives and you decided to just start being creative and you know take advantage of this time because what else are we gonna do? <laughs> you know, just you know, cry every day. Ooh, you stuck for yeah, it doesn't make sense to to, to right. cry over mm -hmm. you know in my, in my back. Okay. Yeah, I can hear my internet connection is Yeah, it's all about how you stuck. It's okay. Here you go. <laughs> Sorry. So uh let me ask you how you started <laughs> in this business. What was that like? Are you there? Oh my god. Oh man. Here um, we go, here we go. You know, I I've been at can you in my in my back? You kind of stuck a little in my bit. Back. I in can my, hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you're moving a little bit. There you I, go. How about can you hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> Man, you know, I know it's, 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 like, it's, it's all good. good it's all good. Yeah. So anyway, back to your question. Back to yeah. the subject. Um, so I got my start at the ripe old age of six. Damn, you were old. You were <laughs> yeah, late bloomer. <laughs> Late bloomer, but hey, you know what? Never too late, right? Right. So that was so I was six. six. Um, when I yeah, when I actually you know, well, I was six when I actually caught the acting bug. Um, mm -hmm. I used to watch the Cosby Show, you know, as a family with my parents. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it came on Thursday nights at eight o'clock. Yeah, and um, that was <laughs> that was like our thing. You know, we eat dinner and then you know watch a family friendly show. We'd all laugh and so. I, you know, was old enough to know that, okay, this is make believe is not real. Um, but still, you know, I was like, okay, well, I want to do, you know, what those kids are doing. Look like they were having so much fun. I mean, I knew nothing about the world, but I just was, I gravitated to what was going on, you know, in that screen. So, mm -hmm. you know, of course I expressed interest about a million times, you know, how children are mom, right. dad, I'm gonna do that. Mom, dad, I'm, I'm gonna do that. And they're like, okay, you know, because I have, you know, the awesome parents that I have, they're like, you know, never discouraging me. Just like, okay, yeah, you know, you, you know, if you want to do it, you know, just, you know, pray for it. So we're Nietzsche and Buddhists. I'm a Nietzsche and Buddhist. Right. So, you know, the term they would, you know, my mom would say, well, you know, chant, chant about it. So, you know, me, you know, you tell a kid to do something. Yes. <laughs> it's motivated and something that they want to do. Be careful. Uh -huh. Right. Because, <laughs> as you can see, you know, I, I would, I, so what happened was I would, you know, get up and I, I would see, you know, my mom, you know, when she would be, you know, doing her prayers morning and evening and, you know, I would sit down and I was a very obedient child in that, in that regard, like, okay, well, I really want to do this happen. So um, what happened was my, I told her some commercial workshops because he expressed interest in going, still a, a very accomplished actor. Um, she spoke to my mom and talking, you know, they were. Uh oh. Norman, where are you? Just some. Um... Uh oh. Uh oh, I know, right? <laughs> in, in my back? Them... There you go. <laughs> yeah, you, fro you froze there for a minute, too, so. I know, I know, it's okay. <laughs> like, 
Because I can see myself fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, my, my, yeah I'm, not, I'm still moving, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's okay. Okay. So Good. anyway, yeah, long so. story short, um, so my mom actually got in, inspired to, you know, just from my, my inspiration of, you know, my saying I wanted to, to be an actor um, and then getting this information from my auntie who said, hey, you know, you should enroll him in these commercial workshops. This way, you know, you, you'll get a, a chance to see what it's like to be in, be in that, that mm -hmm. environment. And problem was we were in, well, it didn't, it really wasn't a problem, but it was a, a slight issue. We were living in Charlotte, North Carolina at the time and the workshops took place in LA because that's, this is where you right. know, business is. So um, how do you overcome that hurdle to become, to be in LA every Wednesday for eight weeks? <laughs> wow. What happened was my parents just so happened that they they worked for the airline, so oh. they um, were able to utilize their their um the buddy passes. Right. So, okay. So I would get out every day. I would get out of school Wednesday. We go to the airport. Really. Fly out here, and because of the time difference, it was it worked out because I could fly here and time you know to be here in time to drive from LAX to Burbank, do the class, go from there back to the airport you know, take, catch a red eye and then fly back to North Carolina and land in time for me to go to school. And I did that for eight weeks. That is dedication at a, at a very young age. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, and, and my, and that was, that was also a very, very uh, great display of support. Mm -hmm. and or uh, craziness <laughs> of my parents because I, I honestly don't know how many parents would have tried to work tried to work that out I mean because considering you know I'm the youngest of three children so you know, right. they had other, other they have other I have sisters so you know right. but they you know they made it work and so what happened was about a year and a half after all that happened we ended up moving back to LA so I was able you know from that from that um the workshop I was able to get representation so I had a manager and an agent right. and so you know, I was able to go out and audition and you know I did some commercials then I did an episode of um, I guess appearance on True Colors and yeah. I actually ended up being um, invited to become a regular on the show it didn't last though but, but shortly right. after that I, I actually remember that. that show actually <laughs> yeah it's so funny the things I'm sorry to interrupt you but it's so funny the things that I look back on I'm like wait a minute I watched that and now we're yeah. <laughs> meet you as an adult and don't even realize, you know, we never know people's history, you know? It's, it's, right, right. It's yeah, amazing. It's, you know, that, that saying small world, it really mm -hmm. is. We don't realize it until, you know, you have conversation, you engage in dialogue with people and you're like, wait a minute, you did, oh, you, like, you know, we were just, we were talking about, you know, Wesley Snipes and that connection right. and how, you know, um, he and Vanessa Bell Calloway had to work together and I worked with both of them on a project right. that I did and you knew him and, you know, yeah, so it's just, it's That's so good. I, mean, I used to work at Radio City Music Hall, and Wesley used to work there in the 80s for a while. And um, a, a good friend of mine at the time had a cleaning house cleaning service, and I used to clean Vanessa Bell Calloway's sister's house. <laughs> so, but Norman got to work with them on a different aspect. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. Hey, it was it was really good living. And actually, um, Wesley was a good friend of my uh, cousins, and uh, I hadn't seen Wesley for 30 something years until I was on the set of. Um, Dolomite. Mm. And I had no hair, and shaved my head, and I had glasses, and he didn't recognize me for a few seconds. And he looks at me and he goes, Those sandwiches. He said, those sandwiches. Oh, wow. So I'm like, oh, you remember the food. So that was kind of nice, you know, because he was yeah. very nice back then. I don't I don't care what anybody says. Wesley was the man. He really was. Yeah, he, he it, I mean he still is because I actually ran into him um at an Oscars party mm -hmm. in 2006, which was about 11 years after we had worked together. Okay. And, you know, so imagine, you know, he saw me as a kid, you know, 11 year old, and now right. I'm, you know, you know, <laughs> actually, I mean, I, I wasn't too much taller. <laughs> I know, me either. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he could, he could tell, he's like, okay, I mean, I had, had a little bit of this. So he's like, it took him a minute, you know, cause I actually, what happened was I was, you know, mingling with other people and, you know, I turned, and I saw, I saw him and I was with a really good friend of mine. And she's like, that's Wesley. It's like, y'all work together, didn't I? I'm like, yeah. So I, I was approaching and he was talking to some people that was, you know, admiring him for, you yeah. know, him his work Wesley. and all that. <laughs> so I went up and I was like, yo, Wesley, how you doing? Uh, Norman, he was like, what, 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 wait. And so <laughs> one of the other was a lady, she was talking to him and she's like, you know, so um, Wesley, he, he's like, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Just <laughs> one second. So he's like, huh. 
Norman, <laughs> what? <laughs> so he right, he's like, dude, like, I'm not, he's like, I'm not gonna ask what you're doing here. Cause I mean, you know, you're here, yeah. I'm here. Like, like, what's good? So we ended, yeah, up, right. <laughs> we ended up catching up for, you know, a little bit. And, but that, that was, it was, I know what you mean by like, you know, when he's, he's a very, um, I mean, he's Wesley, you know, I, I worked yeah. with him, like I said, it was 11 years in the past. I've been, it was like the same guy. Right. You know? and yeah. And that's how I felt. Yeah. I know that he, we were pretty close for a little, for a short period of time, but you know, I, I know he didn't remember, remember me, mm -hmm. but he remembered the situation. So it was really nice for him to, yeah. to he remember that much. And then after a while, like after a couple of days, he was like, like, you know, can we point from here and there? Cause uh, yeah, I worked in a show for maybe two months, uh, the movie. So it was, it was a nice experience, you know, but yeah. So Norman, I have to say, this is, the, I've been trying to miss, I've been working with this little joke for a while, <laughs> but you work with two of the color purple people. <laughs> Wait, you Oprah, you I said, you work oh. with two of the color purple people, <laughs> Oprah Winfrey and <laughs> Danny Glover. Now this is amazing. First of all, mm -hmm. How was Oprah to work with? You were a little, you were young, so I'm sure she was really nice to you. I hope she was really nice to you. Oprah was very, she, you know, Oprah was a very gracious individual. She was also very real. Um, right, okay. I'd, I'd tell this story and, <clears throat> well, I'll just get into it. Okay. Um, initially, it was, you know, she, she was, was very, um, Kind of, well, I mean, she'd come in, do her thing, and kind of go, you know, into her her room or trailer or whatever the case. Um, and am I still with you? Because I just saw that. Oh, yeah, you're there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just stuck for a second. You still yeah. okay. You're back. So <laughs> anyway, you know, like, so it, the, for the first, like, couple weeks or so, you know, it, it seemed as if she was a little bit disconnected from the rest of the cast and what was actually going on. Mm. Um, but there was a reason for that. A lot of things that were happening behind the scenes, because honestly, um, she she did us a great favor in terms of, or for that project, she did a great favor because she was supposed to be on vacation and Diana Ross was actually supposed to play with Joe Rivers, but she, Diana Ross declined because she was saying that it was, it was too dark or whatever the case, but then she turned around the next year and played. Let's get to friendly. So <laughs> yes. in, in that movie out of dark. So I don't know yeah, yeah. what that was about, You're but right. she um, and it was deeper and darker. She was supposed to play it just, just yeah, exactly. A, a little bit of backstory behind that. She was supposed to play because the, the real LaJoe River, because the movie was based on a true story, a real mm -hmm. family. So the real LaJoe Rivers, her and Diana Ross look, they're like damn near identical. Like they wow, okay. look like they could be family. You know? So when when Diana Ross declined, Oprah basically, because she's all, she was always the executive producer, but so she was like, well, I mean, I guess I'll step in and play LaJoe because she had already, uh, it's, you know, and Alex Natlow was the guy who wrote the book that the film right. was kind of based on. So she knew the story. She, you know, it was kind of crunch time. She was like, okay, I have to do this. So mm -hmm. a lot of that kind of played into her being like, you know, I'm not even supposed to be, I'm supposed to be on a yacht in the Riviera okay. <laughs> with them. <laughs> so, you know, it, it kind of spilled over a little bit, you know, and, and other things, but it turned out to be a really, really great experience. I mean, she was very graceful, uh, gracious to me, um, just even starting out. I mean, I didn't even have to audition for the role. Like oh, I was, wow. you know, selected. She, you know, she knew. And then that, that was a big deal for me even now because, you know, it wasn't like I was an established actor or, you know, anybody. I mean, I'd just done Cop in a Hack and like a few commercials, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And she's like, that's the kid who I want. Don't haggle, like pay them what, they, what they're asking, you know, whatever, just bring, we, I want him. And that that actually kind of, the because the director wanted to audition me. She wanted to go through the whole whatever. And Oprah's like, "Listen, I'm the EP on this. Do what I say, basically." So I'm thank I'm thankful for that. You know, um, but overall, I have to say, you know, um, Oprah Winfrey was very gracious. Nice. I have nothing but um, positive things to say about the experience. I mean, Good. you know, even just her like growing up and learning the backstory of everything that was happening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even with, with on set, you know, she, she kind of started to come out of that, like, okay, well, I'm here. These are great people. 
let me start like not just going to my back and forth to my trailer right you know and and kind of hanging out and you know so it, it did you know once the shoot kind of you know progressed we were able to really like be a family and it was it was cool i mean the the opportunity to you know, even see her, work with her and see her uh, interact with uh, Maya Angelou and you know, right. she played my grandmother on that that uh, project. Right. So, that, I mean, it, I'm just really, really grateful <laughs> to have been in those, those uh, you know, that, that opportunity. Have that opportunity. Right. Oh my God, that's wonderful. You know, those, that's like a once in a lifetime thing and you can tell your kids, I'm rushing yeah. at kids and grandkids or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a little side note for a second. Uh, congratulations on your engagement. I'm kind of biased because Thank you. your fiance is one of my closest friends. <laughs> and <laughs> therefore, you became one of my closest friends from that from that uh, meeting yeah. at, uh, at the Buddhist temple. So it's like, wait a minute, mm -hmm. Unati, do you, I didn't, I, like I said, when I first met you, I, your face was so familiar, but I didn't connect your your face, your grown face with your little, the, you know, kid thing. So yeah, I was like, wait, little, little, yeah. it was never mentioned because, you know, we don't like to go around saying, telling our friends resumes. Like, <laughs> so yes. it was just over time. I'm like, oh, oh, that's why Norma looks so familiar. Your face has not changed at all. But anyway, so what is it like being engaged to the beautiful Unanti Mangaliso? <laughs> oh, man, it is a riot, I tell you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. and you see, you see how theatrical I, I like. I went right because right. it really is like <laughs> being with Unati is probably you know the best one of the best things that has happened to me. Um, she is just she's such a like her heart is so awesome, and she's just she, like you want to just here just come and just let me just cuddle you because she's just so i don't know the word to to use use but she's just such a such a light you know a what light, i mean exactly and yes you know as a as a as for, you know because we were friends for yeah i know yeah. years mm -hmm. and it's so interesting because in our friendship i you know i had um you know i never you know never had like any like feelings or things. it was always like okay this is my friend this is my sister friend but i always had this like protective like Mm -hmm. you know like that's this is my friend so don't you know mm -hmm. don't yeah. like she oh yeah I have new like who, who, who's this new boyfriend like i need right. let me check him out real quick yeah. you know and like i was that kind of i've always been that kind of like you know friend to her but she's but because she's always been a very special person oh, yeah. to me even when we were friends you know we're we're uh engaged um but i just yeah i mean she's <laughs> nothing but nothing she's, but great she's great the epitome I mean, even of when we have magic. our disagreements you know that, that happened mm. i'm sorry say it again i said she's the epitome of black girl magic <laughs> there you go yeah yes. i mean yes. that sums it up right there mm -hmm. like all the stuff i just said that's epitome of black girl magic and black girls rock for real yes she's, yes. Just, she's awesome she's gorgeous she's funny she's just everything she's responsible for me having a manage uh, agent at this point <laughs> She That's introduced right. me, yeah, I me over story. email. She introduced me to my agent over email, and let's say the next day she signed me. <laughs> like, wow. wow! Yeah, so that was thank you, Anati, because I'm seeing Anati all over CBS. <laughs> she's all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's been she's been doing her. She's definitely been been doing her thing, and it's so funny because she's like, oh, well, I really want to, you know. I'm, I mean, I don't want to go too much into this. Right, you know what? Right. Yeah, give her little secrets away, but yeah, yeah. Things that happen. But I, I always, I, I just kind of like, I smile because she's real. I mean, I think this is a, this is an artistic thing. Like artists are, we can be pretty hard on ourselves. Like, yes, for know, sure. Not booking or, you know, things that are happening. We're like, oh, well, what, what if, and you know, and I'm always like, you know what, you are more than enough. You don't have mm -hmm. to worry about if you're not booking, if you're not like, psh, you got chops, you got, and, and and then I always hit it with the, I know, I've been doing this for 37, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And I'm only 27. <laughs> I was doing this when I was a kid, literally. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I know talent when mm -hmm. I see it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, and you, I, I always, like, I'm really sure, like, your time is coming and you don't even worry about it. You exactly, exactly. And I see it, I can feel it. I just I just know it. And she's been doing these, these great projects just popping up on these things. I'm like, wait a minute. 
We're not doing that. And I screamed. The, f- the first time I screamed at the TV, I know I'm going to get back to normal, but the first time I screamed at the TV when I saw a Nazi was it was a commercial for a college. And she's reading her book, holding <laughs> the turn the, the, uh, thing in the subway. And she's reading. I'm like, oh, yeah. God. And I've been dead and dead for like three or four months. I think it was University of Phoenix. University of Phoenix, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, come on. Yeah. That was playing a lot yeah. too. I like I loved it. So so anyway, let me let's get let's forget about Norman for just a second. And let's talk about enormous. Tell mm. us about that persona and, and how did that come about? Well, <laughs> that came about um actually it was a little bit, it was a few things that were that happened during that era. Uh, One of the major things was my desire to, um, you know, continue my career, but I was kind of at a, I mean, not kind of, I was at a standstill. I mean, nothing was really happening in terms of professionally. So creatively, it was like, okay, what do I do? Like, I can't wait until, you know, for actors, it's like, you can't wait for, you know, to get an audition to keep you, you got to, you got to, you know, make your own opportunities. And even now more than ever, mm-hmm. right. you know how important it is you know, Yeah, to make your own, to make your own opportunities. Mm-hmm. So at that time, I think that was basically the, the, uh, the impetus of me. Um, oh, Ooh, I have someone. coffee from the beautiful Unati. Great interruption. Oh. Thank you. Where's her face area? Oh, 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 <laughs> yummy. Oh, she see, and that's a good partner. See, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Just, yeah. Uh, well, yes. So, enormous. yeah. So, enormous kind of came about when when Normandy Golden II was going through his, you know, metamorphosis in terms of, you know, creatively. You know, I was okay. like, you know, I'd done the acting. I mean, literally, I'd done the acting thing as far as I've done it at that particular point in time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been acting since I was six, sixteen. And I'm like, okay. What, what else? Well, 16. Oops, you stuck. Actual album and all that stuff that was released in 2006. Okay. Was, you know, in my 20. Um, but yeah, that, that just kind of happened out of like a necessity to really um, feed that creative spirit. And so, you know, it, it, you know, because I come from a musical family. I mean, my mom right. is a singer. My, my dad is, they played, they were in bands when they were younger. My mom was actually working. Oops. Um, my sister, she's a singer as well. Um, she, nice. she has a band and all that stuff. So I come from a musical family. So the mute, so enormous was basically, you know, that was something I think probably came first and foremost. But the acting thing really, even in my family, kind of caught everybody by surprise. It's like, mm. wow, okay, well, so we know we have singers and musicians, but now we got an actor who is like right. doing movies with all these legends right. you know so yeah. wow that's amazing I, I i i forgot to ask you what uh mr burt reynolds was like oh man another <laughs> another uh another gem i mean yeah. mr burt reynolds you know i once again nothing but great things mm-hmm. you know saying i wanted to say disclaimers it's not like i'm saying oh nothing but great things you know because mm-hmm. if listen if no if they're an asshole i'm gonna say yeah they was Bro, i know you will i know you will <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't want to slander nobody, but, you know, I'm, I'm keeping it real. But I, I have to say I've been very fortunate to work with, you know, for, for the most part. Yeah, 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 you yeah. Know? <laughs> Believe me, I have a little list. Of there was people. some in there that <laughs> I got a little list of people that's like, uh, they, yeah, they was, they was a little, little much. I interviewed but, a friend um, of mine. For he, the most he, part, he Burt Reynolds. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. So <laughs> Burt Reynolds. <laughs> Burt Reynolds, I, yeah, once again, nothing but great things to say. You know, the thing about Burt, it was almost similar to the situation with Oprah and that, you know, because I actually auditioned for Cop and a Half four times. Wow. And then I did, the fifth time I, I did a reading was actually a screen test. But the reason why, because, you, I mean, you're an actor, so you know yeah. the audition oh. process. Like, sometimes mm-hmm. you can audition that many times, but usually, you know, the, the cycle is, you know, you audition you get a call back and then you book, right? Right. right. So I auditioned, got a call back and the producer and some of the other people in on the production was like, well, you know, he's too small, you know, there's stunts involved. Like we don't know if, and really they were actually still trying to 
um, cast uh, a white kid because it was, the cop and a half was written for Macaulay Culkin. And okay. he wasn't able to, he actually dropped out of the production because of negotiations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he started, you know, um, Home Alone started picking up and he, you know, was doing a lot of other, um, I think um, the movie uh, Richie Rich was in the works okay. at the time, yeah. even though Richie Rich came out a year after Cop and a Half and that all that was still in the works. So he's like, ah, you guys aren't paying. Well, he wasn't, but his, you know, his people were like, you guys mm -hmm. aren't paying, you guys are, you know, because Cop and a Half got a lot of false, false starts as okay. well. Like, I mean, Burt Reynolds wasn't initially attached to it. I think oh, it okay. was like, I forget the actor, but so once it got to Burt, you know, and then there was no kid. So they auditioned, I think it was close to 1300 wow kids and they opened it up to girls at one point and then they realized that was not gonna work you know because if Bert is cast as the star like that that just wasn't gonna it just it wouldn't have been a good fit so right you know, kept it with boys and they opened up to black boys and hispanic boy any boy that could play the part that could actually at that point it was like okay let's just get a kid that can do you know the part and so here i come along well I, i'd already always been there but the the, the lead casting uh director a uh, meg lieberman Actually, she would, and I, I thank her for, you know, really being on. Keep this kid in the Uh oh, you stuck. <laughs> Fighting. No, I'm sorry. Oh, you froze for a second. Where are you, Norman? Uh, I think I, I think because you're you're stuck. Yeah, or am I stuck too? Yeah, I'm back now. Are you? <laughs> yeah, you're stuck now, you, but I can hear stuck. you. <laughs> I think you are. You moved. Okay. You were, you were praying for a long time. <laughs> uh oh. We'll be back. Ah, he'll be back. Norm. Uh oh. Hmm. We're back. I think it's live TV, oh. y'all. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> that happened on the view the other day, so don't even worry about it. Whoopi disappeared. Oh, yeah. Gone. <laughs> it was just a black box instead of a black oh. woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. Where's Whoopi? Oh. So okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> are, are we are we, we back? Yeah, we're good now. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just want to make sure that's you're moving. <laughs> <laughs> and you no and, and so wait, I, 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 it's like max headroom remember max headroom <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> right and yet my, you know, no, no, no. <laughs> oops i just spit on the screen <laughs> so, so anyway, anyway um so i auditioned a bunch of times you know the the lead casting director uh meg lieberman she was like you know keep this kid in running they ordered a screen test and then that's when i actually got a chance to meet bert met bert and that's pretty much where it all happened i mean we wow. did our thing and he's like you know what i'm not doing this movie unless you guys cast him like i know and, and at that point he had to read two more kids and he's like i'm you know at personally i think he had had done about a hundred screen tests and oh. so, I mean, the man was, you know, <laughs> pulling the rest of his hair out, saying, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> "What do you guys expect?" So, right. finally, his his uh, his, his um, assistant, who was actually one of the associate producers on Cop and a Half, was like, "Well, you know, they actually wanted so and so and so for this. You're like the the bottom of the barrel last choice." So, you know, that ego, which wasn't true, but she had to say that to keep him like there, because he literally was like, "You know what, I'm." I got evening shade going on. Like I can't think because he was shooting even, evening shade at the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, he's like, I can't deal with this until he met me. We did our thing. And then he's like, okay, I can do this. And so he, you know, out of, out of, uh, you know, the, the graciousness of his heart, you know, he, he still had to read the other kids, but he's uh, like, you know, I already know, you know, who I, uh, who I wanted. So, and, and so from there, I mean, like I said, working with him was just, I mean, it was, it was incredible. Yeah. He was, he was huge and he was, he, I loved everything that Burt Reynolds ever did. I watched everything. So it was yeah. like, okay, look at this. Norman got his start with the yeah. legend and with the, with the icon who was, who was a nice gentleman. Cause I really believe that it's always been a, a good gentleman. So I'm glad, I'm glad oh, to yeah. hear that. 
I'm glad. Yeah, you I mean, that. I've, I've, I've never like I, I, like I said. I mean, we're all human, so you mm-hmm. know, sure, he's, you know, we all have our size, but for the right. most part, I'm, mm-hmm. he's a, he's a, he's a very, he was a very nice, right. decent, great guy all cool. around. That's good to yeah. hear. Now, let me ask you. I want to. Your wall behind you, it's it's full of some, I see some uh, framed degrees. What's, oh, what's up with the wall? Yeah. Tell, me, tell us about that. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I um, guess that's, well, this is our, you know, this is our study. Mm-hmm. We're not denied our new place. So, you know, we have our, our wall of, let me get my hand coordinated right. We have, we have our wall of accomplishments. Right. Um, I won't go, I want to. I want to um, showboat too much. So I'll just show well, a little bit. So yeah, I want to know. Yeah, this, yeah. So these, these, wait. So here, give my finger right. So <laughs> here, um, these are these are degrees. These are oh. my degrees. Um, so I have a, a, a degree in uh, English, mm. and then one in liberal arts, which is the top one um, nice. from from Antioch. And right. then the one down here, that is actually my um, my album. Uh, when I released it, I, it, it was framed for, you know, my accomplishment for, for releasing Amazing. that. Um, I did an album release party. So that was like presented to me as I was, you know, emerging oh. with that. And then this guy right here. Yes, please tell us that one. <laughs> this is, I don't know, can I take it? Maybe I can take, no, nah, I'll leave it. I'll leave it. I don't want to place. I was going to take it and bring it, but. Oh, yeah, yeah, so no, leave this it. Guy, yeah, this guy right here is a ITA Platinum Video Award. So I got that actually at the Toronto Film Festival um, back oh, wow. in 94, mm-hmm. beginning of 94. Um, and so what that represents is it's a, you get that award. It's like a, it's a platinum award. So it's like the equivalent of when, when an album goes platinum and you know they give you the platinum plaque and the, the record, well, Platinum for video sales at the time was a quarter million copies sold in the first week, I believe it was. Wow. Um, which with at a suggested retail price of <laughs> Love it. 18 million. Whoa. So that represents 250,000 copies sold and or 18 million or and 18 million, roughly $18 million in wow. sales the first week. Yeah, that is so one, I was that's presented amazing. with that. Yeah. So yeah, you better keep that up on that wall. Remember that. You hear this? Oh, yeah. He's accomplished. He's not even 40 yet. He's not even 35 yet. Look at this. <laughs> 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 so so what's, what's happening now? What's, what, are you, what are you up to right now? I know you're, you're writing, you're producing something. Um, and I want you yeah. to tell us about that. Yeah. I'm, I've been writing and producing a few things. Um, I released a short film entitled uh, Misperception uh, back, mm-hmm. in, well, actually this year, uh, Juneteenth. Um, and that film actually has to deal with a lot of what we've been seeing, you know, in light of, you know, the George Floyd situation mm-hmm. um, and Breonna Taylor. And even before George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, you know, we have a history of cops you know the law enforcement in the black community having kind of this like tension you know Mm -hmm. um and you know there's this deeper history of why that is but you know it it goes back to you know the, the the idea of doing this short film was to really showcase that it's not about you know, I mean, you know, sure, we can, you know, make laws and defund the police and do all this stuff. But, you know, if our hearts are not changing, mm-hmm. then it's just going to become more of the same. We're going to figure out how to still be the same person with a new law. So what misperception gets at, because the, the premise of it is, you know, it's about a kid who, you know, finds himself on the wrong side of the law. Instead of going to cop, instead of going to um, uh, juvie or getting jail time, he is, uh, you know, selected to to do this police ride along program. So in this police ride along program, he sees that complexity up close and personal, what the cops have to deal with and, and, you know, his community and how even the people in the community treat each other. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's funny because I've talked about this with, with a few people and they're like, well, you know, kind of trepidations like a lot are you trying to make a case for, you know, law enforcement? And I'm like, I'm not trying to make a case for anyone because we're all screwed up. And so when we <laughs> realize that we're all screwed up, we all have, you know, a, a big responsibility in terms mm-hmm. of how we treat each other, 
you know, as far as human beings, right? then we can start to get somewhere. So what misperception pulls out is that there's more than, yes, there is more than one side of the story. I mean, I actually happened to have it because the project was, was inspired by, because one, one of my producing and writing partners is my cousin, my first cousin, okay. who's actually, he's working, he's in Prague now on, on a, a shoot with Marvel. Nice. And, um, you know, we got some other stuff going. We're actually trying to get Misperce- Misperception um, uh, sold as a limited series. But that'd, know, be awesome. that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. Um, his brother, who is also my first cousin, is a, uh, is a detective for uh, the Milwaukee PD. Okay. So, you know, we're hearing all these stories of his experience as being a Black officer, mm-hmm. you know, having to deal with people in the community looking at, oh, yeah, you know, you, oh, you 12 now, or you, you know, you, pit, you, are, you know, you got some mm. straight bacon, you know, you, mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff. And he's like, mm-hmm. I'm trying to actually advocate for you because I know mm-hmm. what it's like, right. you know, so... There's there's a, a there's several layers of complexity that you know can be said for that that relationship between you know law enforcement and the black community that misreception. Right. I mean, it, for, I mean, we only have 14 minutes to try and you know touch on some of that, but mm-hmm. it, it it does at least open the door, start the conversation of how do we you know how do we how do we really really deal with you know, all these cops feeling like, okay, you know, I, I literally do with this badge, I have a license to kill you and, right. and I'll be okay. Yeah, you it's know? crazy. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and we're dealing with the whole race race issue mm-hmm. with that. That becomes a very, oof, mm-hmm. you know, sticky thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, so but- misperception attempts to do is open that conversation of, okay, how are we treating each other as human beings? I mean, yes, it goes without saying, but actually it doesn't because there's a lot of people that, that are, you know, they act like they don't know when they're in certain positions and it's like, oh, well, I'm a cop. So, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I, but, but you're still human. Right. You know? And you can make mistakes and you have your biases and everything else. And, yeah. I believe that, that they, there should be um, mental health. Uh, oh God, what am I trying to say? Uh, they need to go through some kind. They need some psychiatry training. <laughs> I don't know what that yeah. means, yeah, <laughs> but well, just find a way to get there. Yeah, you touch on a really big, big point. I mean, in terms of you know our our human psychology and mm-hmm. just our mental health as a whole. I mean, the things that have transpired amongst humans and you know the history of human beings is, I mean, it's enough to drive people crazy. And if we, really? you know, even some of the ones that are quote unquote sane. Mm -hmm. run around here and you know they're helping people it's like we all have a responsibility we all have a little bit of something Mm -hmm. going not quite right up here Mm -hmm. i mean you can't tell me you know that as black as a black man you know i don't feel the effects you know the 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 post-traumatic slave syndrome you Mm -hmm. know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. from my ancestors like i don't that doesn't resonate with me and my dna i mean you have for 300 years it Mm -hmm. was okay for a particular human being to own other human beings so you think overnight you know we've been we've been free less than we've been enslaved so overnight do you think that this shit's gonna go away Mm -hmm. you know our mind it takes 21 days to create a habit Mm -hmm. and it can sometimes take a lifetime to break that habit so if we run around here thinking that oh well you know we shall overcome and we've overcome because i can sit on the bus next to a white person Mm -hmm. and (laughs) white people ain't riding the bus no more (laughs) <laughs> you know, they got cars <laughs> and car service. You know, it's like the more things change, the more they stay the same. So when we realize we are all responsible, right. and black mm. people might be like, "Well, how am I responsible?" Well, <laughs> yeah. Let's examine how we treat each other in our own right. community. Yeah, so that's oh, a conversation, absolutely. obviously, that we have in house, and it has nothing to do because you know, because you know, on the subject of racism, you know, the white people be like, well, yeah, you know, they're quick to point out, you guys do this, you guys do that. Well, you know, there's reasons for that. Mm-hmm. And you're still mm-hmm. responsible. You right, know, you right. Still, you still play a responsibility in that too. So yes. <laughs> yeah. let's not get too quick with the finger point, you know, but I mean, I'm sorry, I don't mean to digress too much into that. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. This is but real talk. It's, it's real, <laughs> real talk, exactly. So <laughs> this perception basically is, all of what I just mentioned, that project, you know, was, oh, yeah. you know, the idea, the creation to kind of spawn these types of, these types of uh, conversations. Right. Well, I love that. Yeah. Um, so, you, sorry, you're right? using your art for, for something that's really important. And yeah. there's nothing better than having a piece of art that has a meaning behind it. 
I don't care if it's just if it's a song or or a, a TV series or even a sitcom. As long as it yeah. has something that you can, it's entertaining, but it's also meaningful. That's mm -hmm. something that, that I strive to do, and uh, I've seen that a lot more uh, substance lately, as of late. You know, yeah, a lot of yeah. shows are finally doing that, which is kind of you know, it's uplifting yeah. not, in that, not, in that not mindless, not mindless entertainment. I mean, that that's that's actually the creator that I. I saw to be, you know, and not right. just, oh, let me create something that's fun. Like, okay, if it's funny, like let it, when you're, when you're watching, you'd be like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Oh, damn, they <laughs> actually, he actually went there. Whoa, you know what I mean? Because that's, right. that's the power of media. You know, mm -hmm. that's the power of what we do. And it's like, if I'm having a conversation with you and you're not hearing me in regular conversation, then I'll just, I'll throw it in a movie and then you'll right. see it because you'll pay attention then. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm glued to TV. Yeah. Oh. oh. That's what he was trying to say, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's it's nuts. Yeah. It's, it really is. Do you also have a series you were also working on as well? Yes, I had a, a web series which I actually um, just finished. Well, I finished the, the pilot episode. I'm going to premiere it as a short film um, because I have you know a distribution deal of, of distribution partners for you know a lot of the streaming sites. So the di distributors for Misperception, you know, was like, well, hey, you know. What else do you have? And I'm like, right. hey, I have hey. this. So, so my next, yeah, my next project I'm working on launch, uh, uh, um, putting out uh, a launching. It'll be uh, probably premiering in um, beginning of 2021. Okay, um, mm -hmm. it's called Hollywood Kid. Say that again. It's called Hollywood Kid. Hollywood Kid. Oh, yeah. I knew that. I just so, wanted to hear it again. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, huh? Did it. Did it. It's right Did it. here, but it's right here. <laughs> so what Hollywood, Hollywood Kid is, you know, basically my story. You know, my story of, you know, not necessarily my He's whole life. Story. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's not necessarily my whole life story, because you know I'm I'm obviously not a not a kid anymore. <laughs> um but hey, that's uh great. It, it, Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I've been told that I wear it really nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, you see, your face is still young, so you get away with it. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, it's like people look at me and they're like, but... But, uh, hmm. but it's cool. Uh, look at that. Yeah, it looks cool. How, how old are you? Yeah, say, hey, I'm a Hollywood kid. What you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Either you look really great for your age, like you're old and look really great, or... You're young and you have gray hair, which right, yeah. doesn't, uh, it's gonna be both. Yeah. When you <laughs> now it's because you look young, gray hair. When you get old, it's gonna be dang, you look good for he's eighty. <laughs> right, right. And, you I know, tell you, the older yeah, I, the older I, I get, the younger old is. <laughs> That's why I feel. <laughs> right. I'm like, I'm like, what? Yeah. He was ninety when he died. He had like four more days to live. What the? F <laughs> <laughs> So I'm sorry. Go ahead. Tell us about Hollywood. I tell real quick. I tell I tell um, Unati. I say, you know, it's funny because I have like the gray in my hair now. It'll be funny if I'm like 70 <laughs> or 80 and I look exactly like I look now <laughs> at 80. White afro. <laughs> <laughs> like Benjamin Button. You know what I'm saying? For real. I was like, wait a minute. What happened there? Um, but anyway, back to back to Hollywood. Because yeah. Hollywood kid. Um, that is, you know, it's a comedy. It's it's. A bit satirical so you know I, and and you know I, I i go there a little bit in terms of you know when i say my story i'm talking about like my transition to you know becoming a writer and producer okay. behind the scenes and what that mm -hmm. looked like you know um pitfalls and you know trying to pitch projects to people who you know it, it's like they know who i am and you know, for all intents and purposes, like, okay, I'm a celebrity, that you have that status, but right. you're only, in Hollywood, like, you're only as good as your last project, and if your last project is 20 years old, what we did, right. you know, they're yeah. like, well, what have you been doing? You know? Right. Um, mm -hmm. And especially, you know, that celebrity status doesn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily translate into the writer's world, because they're like, well, but you're an actor, so can you even write? And I'm like, well, right. you know, I've been reading scripts longer than you've been writing them, probably. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm, don't get me wrong, like that, no, no, no shade and no arrogance. No, it's just, just a fact. A fact. Mm. You know, it's like you're asking me if I understand what's going on here. And, I, and, and to, to their point, in some instances, I, I get a lot of people that are like trying to do this, you know, this meaning, you know, trying to do, you know, 
have a career in, in, in the entertainment industry and they it's like oh well it's easy because so and so and so did it and you know I read their interview and they just you know people seem to make things look so easy but it's not it's no. like uh -uh. just like anything else that you do you have to know exactly what you're doing you got to be you have to be fairly good at it you right know, you yeah wanna be you can't win so, on certain things it's like <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. so my frustration is like okay I'm in that you know, at one point in my life, I was in that midpoint. I was like, okay, so I go hard on like really trying to, you know, recreate my acting career as an adult, which means kind of starting over, you know, for mm -hmm. former child actors. That's what it could mean if you don't have a good publicist that can spin things and put things, you know, I haven't quite had the fortune of having that, you know, but I'm not tripping because I'm still keeping it moving. Right. Um, so Hollywood Kid takes a look at what it's been like for me to, say make the decision that, okay i'm gonna be a writer producer because that's what really where the power is and not the power just to have it but like okay if i want to become an actor if ain't nobody hiring me if i'm you know kind of in this like okay well, what type are you you know what i mean i'm five right. seven however many pounds like i, I so mm -hmm. i can't play the big bad guys i can't I, there's not a type for me so i have to right. create my mm -hmm. own, you know projects mm -hmm. so why not talk about what you know which i mean and if I sit down and have conversations with you about what has been like <laughs> trying mm -hmm. to pitch projects and having people be like, oh yeah, you know, I, I mean, I had an agent, one, one example, you know, I had an agent that I was trying to work with, you know, a number of years ago, I think it was back in like 2004 or five. And, you know, she's like, well, you know, you have to understand Norman, you're not a kid anymore. And I'm like, really? I, I, I had no idea. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know that. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. What am I going to do now? yeah right <laughs> so, so she's like you're not a kid anymore so you can't basically she's like you can't ride on the fame and the success that you had at Captain. like you're gonna have to put in some work so i'm like okay i mean i'm hearing you okay. so here here's what we do so they're asking she's asking me for materials updated resume and all that so i'm like okay so when i give you my updated resume here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take off all the projects that i did as a kid and then we start from scratch. I'll do, I'll put, I'll make up some shit. I put like, cause the thing is people are gonna know who I am when they see the face and they put two right. together like you did, they're yeah. gonna know. So instead of, since I can't use cop and a half or any of that shit that I did, I'll just take it off of the resume. So I won't have to look at it. You won't have to look at it and I'll be fresh. Right. Oh no, 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 no. And that's not what I'm talking about. You're misunderstanding. No, I'm understanding clearly what you're saying. Right. Mm -hmm. So if what I did when I was eight doesn't matter, then why am I even talking about it? Right. It does matter. It does but it matter. Matters, it matters. It only matters when you're in certain groups or mm -hmm. it matters when, you know, when, 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 you know, transactions are happening. Like, oh, okay. well, you know, you haven't worked in 20 years, so I can't pay you the quote that you, you, you worked for, you worked to get when you were a kid, mm -hmm. you know, so I can now figure out how to take advantage of you. You know right. what I'm saying? So it, mm -hmm. what I'm saying is it's, it's that sticky place of you know former child actor and then also you have the the stigma of that like oh yeah you, have you abused drugs have you been you oh. know abused have you been whatever the case you know what i'm saying and, I, and i'm fortunate that i you know i have a i have a really i've had a really um fortunate life i mean i've had struggles i mean i don't get me wrong but i have not i've literally and figuratively kept my nose clean right you know, so, thank you yeah. that's amazing yeah. That's so, so once again, good. getting back to Hollywood Kid, it takes you on that journey of, okay, wow, this is what this, you know, what this kid has had to go through. I mean, and even, even to a lesser extent, like, you know, other collaborations with other people where, you know, I'm the type of person where I'm like, okay, I'm jumping in, let's collaborate, let's go, you know, but there's some people that are like, well, you know, there's, there's always the, the, the business side of things and the, well, hmm, uh, I don't know, like, uh. I really can't take advantage of you, so I figure out how to like be <laughs> like. Well, you know, no, nah, well, we're not gonna, we're not gonna do this. And then, like, I see you six months. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not a good fit. You know, and then like six months from now, like you're producing and you're doing things, and you know, I, like I put in a lot of work into our collaboration, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, like I'm not involved. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. just, it's a lot of it's just a lot of things that you know I've and, and don't get me wrong, like I count all of it joy. I count mm -hmm. all of it, you know. Um, uh, it's it's a it's been learning experience, and I'm you know the thing is I just I I will never quit you know right. for something that is meaningful That's to me. 
Right. You know? Yeah. And I wanted to ask you, you've said it a couple of times and I wanted to ask you, what do you, how do you feel about that phrase, former child star or child star? Did they throw that in first before they induce you as Norman Golden, the second who he is right now? And then you can say, oh, you were, you, you were, you were a child actor, not, hey, former child actor. You know, I mean, he's, you're still, in, you're still here. So it's like, what, what does that mean? You grew up. Were you supposed to stay a little? I don't, it, it always confused me when they said that. Uh, <laughs> say that i meant to say yeah so how do you feel about that phrase does it get on your nerves sometimes um i've already done it a couple times i'll do it again <laughs> there you go and that's the hey but that was a look you gave when you was <laughs> i like that roll your eyes thing it's per, it's perfect yeah yeah so that's i mean I, not you know, and it's you excuse you got it i mean it's, it's sarcasm but it's all in good it's it's in good humor i mean i you know it's one of those things where it's like humans we know we like to label the shit out of it everything I mean, come on. and that and blah blah mm -hmm. i'm an actor right right oh, I've been, and it just so happened that i did some shit when i was a kid right you just happened, you know to, you just happened to start early <laughs> yeah i got an Actually, early start and, and, and the, the, it always struck me weird is uh when there's a story that involves a kid who's if it isn't a a, a a young actor, who else is gonna play that part? I mean, what are you talking you about? It's not good. Hey, you wrote this yeah. with the child in mind, so what the hell is mm -hmm. going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, you're not, you're not gonna get an adult to play a kid's right. Just the wouldn't. only time that does happen, I have to say this. I my my uh, my uh, day job is a stand-in and a mm -hmm. background actor. And I stand mm -hmm. in for a lot of famous actors, but <laughs> I also stand in for, for people's kids. <laughs> and let me explain. Oh. Okay. <laughs> because when yeah, some, some productions, happen, if a child but... if a child comes on set, that's working on set, and mm -hmm. uh, they usually hire a, a little person to be in their double or their stand in. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if it's a, if they don't want to spend any more money and they already have a black person on the set, me, <laughs> they just baby yeah. get on my knees. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> on a knee pad, it was, I was on Community and I, I was uh, Donald Glover standing and uh, this particular episode was uh, Malcolm Jamal Warner came on as Yvette Nicole's husband, but mm -hmm. Yvette Nicole Brown's husband and they had the two kids. So I was standing in for four okay. people that day. First of all, wow. Malcolm Jamal Warner is six foot something. So I had to get on a box. Donald Glover is exactly <laughs> the same height as I am. Perfect, perfect size. And the little kids are like, four foot whatever so yeah i'm on my knees half the day yeah, the whole the of the day it was just <laughs> it was wow. horrible but they didn't want, i'm like okay you want to pay me all these hours I, I think i was there for like maybe almost 19 hours that day the kids only worked a short that's one thing about kids they only work a short period of time they have a yeah. uh, find out yeah. amount of hours they can work so yeah. um i was only on my yeah, knees for I, about five or six hours <laughs> i could only, only work during school hours when I was younger, when I hit like my teenage years mm -hmm. or, or, you know, around, you know, teens, that's actually when I stopped doing a lot of acting. Um, I could work longer, but during, um, the, during the time when you're in school, I think oh. it was like six hours a day. Right, right. You had to get your, you had to get your schooling, your school and time. Your, and yeah, we always had a... yeah, but then if you weren't in school, you could actually work the full eight hours. Right. Okay. Yeah, if you were over a certain age, I think it was over nine, eight or nine years old, you could work. You could work an eight-hour day. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we always had um, teachers on it and an advocate for for kids, and I thought mm -hmm. that was really good because I'm like, they certain parts of the show that kids should not be see, hearing right now. <laughs> you know, the in, in your windows on community, so they would yeah. like do their scenes first, get them out of the way, and then do all the rest of it with you know, they'll they'll you know edit it together with the actors that could stay you know, longer and cause, yeah, because you actually actually as a kid too, you had to be unless it was a night shoot, mm -hmm. um, which in night shoots, you know, you could only work a, a couple of a few hours anyway, right? Um, you had to be wrapped before a certain time as well. So I remember there was a few times even on cop and a half where you know, I'd been there and you know, they're like, okay, we can't be farting around like we have a kid on that we have to wrap and he's like, the, the star, you know, he's the, -star he's the star of the movie so we got to get his stuff done otherwise we'll be behind so right. yeah there were plenty of times where i'm like at the end of the day scrambling to, to work do stuff and then they're like all right norm's wrapped for the day you know and then i'm up are there times uh that you look back and you, you say oh i didn't remember that or wow this my life is really really fascinating it's it's 
I have those moments probably every other every other day. It's kind of frightening though because I'm like, okay, are these senior moments? <laughs> are, are, they, are they just you know, I'm just remembering stuff. I'm I'd like yeah. to say I'm just remembering, you know, because we all forget, you know. But, yeah, um, yeah, I do. I have those moments where it's like, you know, wow. Even talking to you, you know, and, and I'm doing this interview because I actually did another. I had a, another interview that I. Um, did a few, a few days ago and when I was talking to the gentleman I was sharing a story uh I think about um it was a story about, about Moby Dick and it had to do with Australia because that that was shot in Australia so oh, okay so it had to do with that but I was just remembering as I was telling the story like whoa yeah that did happen mm -hmm. okay wow yes so I, I do have those moments great well, I cannot believe that I was able to sit down with Mr. Norman Golden II. This has been a dream since I met you. And I wanted to bring forth people that are on the side of right with their art. Mm -hmm. And I've been wanting to do this. And of course, my show stopped for a while. And when I brought it back, I'm like, I have to have Norman on my show. And I kept it quiet. I didn't want to say anything to you at all until I saw you in person. Uh -huh. So you had mics. I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna I have to ask Norman if he would do it because I don't. Yeah. I, I know you don't do a lot of, uh, you know, you don't let people in, intrude in your life too much. So not too much. Not yeah. too much. So I, I really appreciate that you came and came onto my show and and decided to do this with me because. For yeah. sure. For yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, since since I, you know, when I met you through um, Nati, I mean, it's just been. I remember that that one. I think it was a Halloween party or something that we yeah. actually met at. Nati. It was like. <laughs> This dude is cool, and you know that rarely happens. I mean, I mean, I like, I, I, li I love to give everyone a chance, you know. And meaning what, I, what I mean by that is like, you know, when I'm meeting people, it's not like, you know, not one of those. It's just like, you know, but when you, <laughs> with you, it was just like, hey, I'm Briscoe, blah, 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 and it was just like this dude is just like all the way cool. Like I, I, I can dig it, you know. And yeah, oh, and I remember that, that conversation. We started having conversation and just kind of mingling, and I, you know, saw how you just mingled. And everybody's like, "Oh, Frisco," and I'm like, "Okay, yes, this." I love to be around people like that. You know, oh, it's like no, it. thank you so no much. Pretense, no, you know, none of that. Yeah. Just, just I, all, I know all I can suck the air out of a room sometimes. I know I get on some people's nerves in our crowd in our group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to mention that person's name, but you know who you are. <laughs> 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 Every time that person sees me, it's just like shade, shade. I'm like. <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> but but I still love that person. I'm not gonna even say that person's name. But that person I can tell, that person. You know, I can I can tell that you're like, I feel like you're like itching to just say that the name, even in a sneeze or something. I don't the way give you that said person that credit kind of... <laughs> for getting on my nerves because I actually love that person a lot. But uh, I even with the shade, it's just it's all love, it's all good. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we're like we're like a little family, you know. Um we, you haven't gotten the nerves yet, though. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, I hope I, I hope I don't. Well, maybe no, maybe I won't. should. Maybe. Well, maybe you know what though, Briscoe? Maybe I should get on your nerves just so that we can really, you know, because family, you know, you yeah. your siblings, just or your brother, you're like, man, you get on my nerves. Yeah, but it's all love. So maybe once once I start to actually do that, then we'll really yeah. be, you know, like, the damn. community will really be tough. Like, well, I thought I was close. I thought I was close. There was a movie back in the day with Red Fox, and the name mm -hmm. of it was Norman. Is that you? So oh. we went to we went to Palm Springs and I just kept springing that on Norman. Is that you? And I'm like, after a while, I was like, this man is getting tired of my ass. <laughs> 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 oh, with that said, um, is there anything else you want to talk about before we we, we uh, head out? Um, no, I just well, I do want to say, you know, for everybody that you know will watch this is watching whatever the case, um, you know, just stay up stay safe, you know, don't let this COVID-19 or COVID-20 stuff get you down. Uh, I know it's easier said than done, but, mm -hmm. you know, find, find your passion, you know, find a passion if you don't feel like you have one, which I think most of us do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know it, it may seem like it's kind of preachy what I'm saying right now, or, or, or you know, um, trite, like, oh yeah, you would say that. No, it's all but positive, it's but real. really, like, I mean, mm -hmm. Find find the light, find the silver lining. I mean, that's what life is about. Like, you know, we're we're in some really interesting times in terms yeah. of, you know, just our human relations. I mean, I, we could talk about race, economics, all that stuff, Ooh. but fact of the matter is, we are, you know, each other. Like, we are one. Like, it, all mm -hmm. this stuff happens because of us. So, mm -hmm. you know, from from an artistic standpoint, I'm striving to, 
you know, create works of art that people can laugh at, they can right. tear up, they can get the point and actually make, you know, make their lives grow and blossom from, you know, what I have to offer. So, wow. you know, stay up. That's and, right. You know, stay blessed. Well, thank you for that message, Norma. It's, 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 it's beautiful. And you're a beautiful person. And I, I've said it to you in person off camera. Uh, and I appreciate you being here. Now, all y'all out there, if you have a dream in your heart and a plan, it's never too late. Can you dig it? Thank you, Norman. Right. You have a great day. Y'all be good yeah. now. And vote, y'all vote, please vote.